We're here getting ready. Happy Treasure Treasure Weekly Appraisal event, but more importantly, happy Memorial Day. Um, our sincerest thanks to those who gave everything uh, so that we could live the lives we enjoy living. So the slowly we're opening up. We're at stage one in New York State, which is nice, starting to thinking about uh, getting back to a normal way of life, uh, whatever that's going to be. I mean, part of the, I think, like... I just want to lean back. I want to, I want to, I want to lean back. Try it now. <laughs> Try it now. Super no, this is good. I'm comfortable. I just don't want to slouch. Or, okay, or like don't. lean on your arm. <laughs> really? It would be uncomfortable for you. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Phone's ringing. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, <laughs> So, yeah, so it's been a really strange thing going back and forth uh, from, oh, my goodness, how is this all going to work out uh, with the virus? How long are we going to be like this? And, like, for myself, getting to a point where it's like, oh, okay, I don't have control over this. I'm just going to concentrate on what I can do tonight. And then, bam, some other piece of news comes out or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> or then now we're opening back up. How does opening back up? look where yeah. do yeah i mean i mean it what, seems open life seems kind of normal doesn't to me yeah well you get to go to work every day That's alexander's true. working at the or walgreens yep um yeah but just what, going out and about it seems like a normal volume of people shopping and driving last there couple was like days a two week, here, there was sure. like a two-week period where it was dead but now it seems normal yeah. Yeah. there's no restaurants no movie theaters yeah really strange i uh Tricky to think about the what the economic ramifications of all this are going to be, but the, not much we can, certainly not much I can do about it other than you know uh, get back up uh, running as safely and appropriately, and which we started doing. So that that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, both uh, sides, uh, both my family and my wife's family had uh, people in the service that. Uh, in the armed services going back uh, generations, uh, my wife's father, George, George was his nickname because he uh, was attractive and looked a lot like George Raft. Uh, he was a, a turret gunner in a... Belly gunner. Uh, belly gunner. Belly gunner. Belly gunner. Because that's the one that went to the smallest guy. Yeah. Right next to he was a belly gunner in a bomber in World War II and flew many missions and, uh, you know, definitely put in his time. And his son, George, uh, uh, served in Vietnam. The And I'm sure lots of uh, uh, older, George Sr.'s uh, uh, brothers, I know, served over there. My grandfather, uh, Krieger, was uh, he came from a line of soldiers and he was uh, devastated that he couldn't uh, volunteer in World War One. He emigrated around 1902, I think, uh, from Prussia, uh, East Prussia, part with the, which is now Poland. And uh, and World War One broke out. Uh, the United States joined World War One just after he had turned 40, so he couldn't enlist there. So that was sad for him. Although he was a guy who uh, uh, remembered where he had emigrated from, and he always uh, sang the Pledge of Allegiance, and tears would come to his eyes. And uh, national he, anthem. The, or the yeah. national anthem, yeah. yeah. The and the he appreciated the, deeply the the freedoms that we enjoy. So and. Uh, you know, and was a steadfast New Deal Democrat. And, uh, yeah, so my uncle James, on the other side of my family, my grandfather's brother James was in World War, fought in World War II, and his sister, uh, Corny, uh, was a uh, woman, whack? I think a, a whack. Uh, she also served in... Uh, uh, World War II and just subsequent. So anyway, our hats off to 
the service members in our family and all the service people in your family who have uh, sacrificed for so long and uh, uh, so valiantly. And so today, I like this picture. The um, this is great. The, I love this image of the woman. It's a I think it's a relatively modern uh, depiction of a popular. Uh, illustration from the World War II era representing the the strength of the, the people who stayed at home supporting the war effort, which was a, a st substantial thing. And our hats off to all of those, too. I think today we, uh, you know, in our society, war and war has gotten more and more sanitized. We don't see what the reality is of that really anymore. I mean, when I was a kid, I remember during the Vietnam War, we, you know, every day it was the daily uh, casualties, the enemy casualties, our casualties, how many killed, how many wounded, lots of <clears throat> footage live on TV of battles going on and uh, very different than, uh, you know, the the Iraq wars, or even uh, today, you really don't see uh, very much uh, anything at all. And, uh, and also very different from the kind of like the, the worldwide effort, uh, the, how people pulled together in World War II. Very, very different time. Very different time. And uh, the, I like, it seems like it was in many ways a, a simpler time. Horrific. I mean, I'm watching the the world on fire, great uh, masterpiece uh, uh, theater series on PBS, which I think may be concluding the final episode, final season tonight. Anyway, a great, great show, but you know, horrific. The uh, what uh, we all went through uh, back then. So moving on to antiques. You got anything you want to say about uh, the 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 I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, we plan this such, so carefully. You've, you've left such ample opportunity for me to just jump in. Yeah, just jump in anytime. <laughs> just push me over off the screen. No. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. It'll be my show now. Okay. So, do you know what this picture is? Oh, if I had to guess, that would be uh, that would be Robert E. Lee uh, signing the surrender. Bam, you nailed it. Yep. Uh, signing the surrender at Appomattox of the Civil War. So we get, there's a, a in my business, there's, we've uh, bought and sold all sorts of historical memorabilia over the years and uh, historical memorabilia related to wars and uh, armed conflict are popular. Uh, the memorabilia from the Revolutionary War, the American War of Independence is quite uncommon. I do see it from time to time. One of the, uh, a wonderful uh, image, a wonderful photograph I sold once was of, uh, a it was an albumin photograph dating to, you know, uh, during the Civil War of the last surviving uh, or purportedly uh, veteran of the Revolutionary War who was sitting there with with his old uniform and it was really it was quite charming a very elderly gent uh, but anyway just because of the the lack of technology back then and the the period of time that has passed by uh, relics and memorabilia from that time are very uh, uncommon once in a while we'll see a, a gun uh, I've seen lots of uh, dug up uh, Revolutionary War or buttons and uh, you know projectiles from from guns, but we don't see so much of those. We see a lot of stuff from the Civil War, big conflict. We're well into uh, well into the Industrial Revolution. Uniforms were mass produced, weapons were mass produced, uh, swords, firearms, um, medals, uh, all sorts of stuff comes through here, and very interesting. So this is. Uh, I think was this Dustin? Dustin, where's the image? Well, uh, I think it was, yeah, Dustin. Uh, I hope I'm getting his name correct. Sent this in. 
Yeah, I think that, by email, yeah? Yeah, by yeah, email, one of the things. Yep. So this is a, a mass-produced print from the early 20th century kind of thing that to might sell to a collector in the 25 to 50 dollar uh, range it's interesting if you're interested in the civil war and this sort of thing um but uh as a mass produced uh image not very valuable but it reminded me of something that uh we sold for somebody uh Oh, uh, a long time ago, I th well, maybe five or six years ago, uh, we came across. Now, here's the uh, here's the auction record of it. So there was a little uh, de uh, old uh, daguerreotype case, uh, a little old uh, picture case that had this little note. It said from uh, Tenable? Colonel Tenable, a piece of uh, Drip used to write the terms of surrender between General Lee and Grant. Um, chip. A chip from the Flagstaff at Fort Motrine, April 1864, maybe? Anyway, the chip wasn't there, but a very cool, uh, maybe two or three inch long piece of wax coated string, which was uh, in a, the, these went in coils in these little uh, uh, wick holders that were uh, portable lighting implements back during the Civil War era. And this was a little piece that uh, had been used in the lighting when, uh, at that very time, when Lee signed the surrender. So that, that was so cool. It was really, I love pieces of history like that. So we sold that. Uh, and uh, that little p with this, and we did the the um, we did the research. You know, we went back to says from Colonel uh, uh, Venable, and it turns out that that was in fact uh, Robert E. Lee's uh, aide de camp at uh, uh, during that period. So the, all the history uh, checked out, and at auction it brought you know twenty five hundred dollars, which. Uh, is uh, remarkable for a little piece of candle wick, but you know it's the it's the history, it's the the uh, the, the wonderful story that goes along with it. So that was pretty cool. That that was very interesting. Next, so here we had um, was this Jean? I think Jean sent in the I'm saying, hi, I'm saying hi to John. Oh hey John. Hi John. Uh, say hi to Bev too. If Bev's there, the Hi, Bev. so this is a little Dutch doll that dates to around uh, World War II era, and I thought this was really interesting because it's got buttons made of little coins, and if you look closely, it's a, a Dutch coin dated eighteen or 1937. Yep. So around this, and they came to mind because one of the things I see very often, we deal in uh, all types of coins and currency, and the types of, one of the uh, categories of coins and currency that I see most often are people bring in groups of old foreign coins and old foreign currency that were brought back from World War II by returning service people. Uh, a lot of which you'll get uh, big wads of German currency uh, and usually it's German currency that came from the, the, the period of the Weimar Republic. The, in the 19, early to mid-1920s, there was a period of uh, insane uh, inflation in Germany. And uh, some of you, we come across, you know, million mark notes, 10 million mark notes, 100 million mark notes. Uh, and the currency got so worthless that the, ultimately they were taking bundles of currency and burning it for heat, bundles of currency, yeah. using it for wallpaper. I heard about like wheelbarrows to go buy some bread, wheelbarrows Wheel, of currency. Yeah, to go buy yeah. some bread. So we see a lot of that that uh, was brought back by Crazy. service people. Most of the, that sort of material that we see is of uh, minimal value. Sometimes uh, we'll have uh, veterans who were in the uh, Pacific theater and in Southeast Asia <coughs> during the 
during World War II will come back with uh, old Chinese currency. And uh, as we've talked about before, the marketplace for for Chinese antiques and collectibles is very strong. And once in a while, will uh, somebody will bring will somebody will bring in some old uh, uncommon Chinese currency in nice condition that has a little bit of value. But most of the the currency that we see that's brought this type of currency, it'll be like military payment certificates, which has no value. It's all obsolete. So mostly, unless you have uh, US dollars from that time or uh, British pounds from that time or uh, Canadian dollars from that time, I guess would still have some value. All the other currencies from that time have are obsolete. And th that is, they don't, you couldn't use them as a, some money, but some may have collectible value. Most of the time, that kind of material that I see might be worth, you know, 10 cents to 25 cents to 50 cents a piece, something like that. Uh, so it's interesting, but not valuable. With the coins, the, uh, again, it, it'll be mostly uh, mass produced coins from the early, from, you know, the first from the 20th century up to, you know, around 1940, 1945. The only uh, value typically in that material is for the coins that have some silver content, uh, which will, um, you know, is just the value of the silver. They have no collectible content. So, you know, a coin the size of a dime to a nickel might have, you know, a dollar's worth of silver in it. A quarter to a half dollar might have two or three or four dollars worth of silver in it. So it can add up to a little bit if you have, you know, a, a substantial amount, but uh, uh, not very high individual value. Back to the doll. So this is a little character doll from that period, from the 1940s, uh, uh, probably made post-war in uh, Holland or in uh, continental Europe. They used the then uh, uh, obsolete coins uh, as buttons. And that was, there's a whole nother area of collectibles with a uh, trench art, uh, which originally was used to describe things that soldiers in trenches made to pass the time <clears throat> as they were sitting there for weeks and weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, or months and months. But it's also applied to, there was a lot in Europe <clears throat> where the economies were, were hard hit and there was some really hard times in the aftermath of World War II. There was lots of surplus stuff all over the place. So we'll come across things like lamps that were made out of big, uh, you know, uh, shells. Uh, missile, missile mm -hmm. shells or, or cannon shells mm -hmm. that... Um, I mean, obviously, which are called trench art. Obviously, they weren't, these lamps were made out of guys sitting in a trench. <clears throat> but it was more during this period where people were, you know, trying to do any kind of home industry they could to generate money from the surplus stuff that was left laying around after World War II. So back to the doll. Um, it's a nice uh, doll in good condition. We can see from its face its composition. So it's like... Uh, some sort of uh, wooden or paper uh, foundation head that has a uh, plaster uh, molded over it and then is uh, painted and lacquered. Mm. Uh, these composition dolls, they uh, used to be more collectible than they are today. Uh, little girls don't really play with these types of dolls anymore and they're very plentiful. Uh, this, although this one's in nice condition, I like that it's got the little coins, you know, on a good day at an auction on eBay, it might sell for 30 or 40 or $50, so a little bit of value, but not a lot. It's nice that it does have the original uh, wool clothing, uh, which is, hasn't been uh, moth eaten and is in nice condition. So that's kind of, that's kind of cool. There's another little picture of the coin. So here we just, oh, we had a great collection of uh, a client, uh, a client's family had owned a general store back in the, um, during World War II and, and prior to that too. And they had been on a mailing list. We have to, you know, now that they said, I'm not sure if it was a general store or the post office anyway. Um, they had some sort of enterprise where they got sent 
uh, all of the posters, uh, the the war bond post, all the posters that the uh, government uh, printing office sent out all through World War II, and it was a wonderful collection. I've never seen the variety, and there are many of the posters I'd never seen before. This one I hadn't cool. seen before. Yeah, pretty great nice. Musician. Great uh, examples of period design, you know, stuff like this, the... Uh, there were some prominent um, American artists who the posters sell for more, you know, Norman Rockwell, um, Howard Chandler Christie, uh, for more for World War I. Um, but most of them were just kind of generic commercial artists, but they're, they're beautiful examples of period uh, American design. This is really nice. Um, and boy, with the they don't sell for an awful lot. I mean, most of the ones I see are worth retail, maybe fifty to a, a hundred dollars. There, uh, but this one, this collection was nice in that it was uh, so many different ones. Um, I think it was maybe uh, seventy or eighty uh, different posters uh, from that period. Uh, really fun, fun to see. I love old collections like that that are relatively untouched that are still kind of uh in the same in the same box and in the same uh, kind of pile as they were in you know 70 years ago that's that's really kind of neat so this one we just i think this this one sold recently for 70 or 80 dollars so uh and it was bought by a woman who was a registered nurse and just loved the uh, like the uh, subject very much. So uh, that is uh, our abbreviated um, but uh, heartfelt Memorial Day uh, Trash or Treasure Appraisal Day. We are uh, opening back up. We're going to, uh, if you have questions, if you're interested in setting up an appointment, we can uh, start talking about that. You can always call us, 587-8787. Uh, our website, marklawson.com, is a great resource for seeing the kind of services we provide and different types of things that we look for. Our uh, email is there, email images, email us inquiries. You can uh, contact us by uh, through your phones. It's interesting that most of our contacts actually come through phones nowadays. Uh, very different world from where I had to uh, advertise in the yellow pages to, to get all the business 25 years ago. Anyway, uh, it's a beautiful day out. I'm so glad that the uh, weather has shifted. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. It's what do you? Day. You got anything you wanna wanna say? Anything I wanna say? Well, uh, oh yeah, tell people they can uh, they can send us pictures mm -hmm. to to put in the show. Yeah. You can send us pictures to put in the show. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and thank you very much. Uh, the it's been nice having the t kind of the downtime to uh, reflect a little bit. Of course, it's easy for me to say because I don't have to worry about where so much where my next meal is coming from. My heart goes out to the poor folks that uh, were living to pay paycheck to paycheck and this put in a really tough position. But I think people have been pulling together and uh, but I'm glad the weather's warm and it looks like everything's moving in the right direction. And, you know, uh, Thanks so much for your patronage and for doing whatever you're doing out there to make the world a better place. And we will look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks again. Bye-bye.